Welcome back, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff Kelly with Wikibon.org. You're watching The Cube, Silicon Angle's flag flagship product, where we go out to the events, and as John likes to say, extract the signal from the noise. Uh, John Furrier is here with me, of course, and uh, we're joined by Lauren Schwartz, VP of Marketing at Attunity, uh, an old-time uh, Cube alum. W welcome back to The Cube. Thanks, great to be back here. Well, uh, we were just talking a little bit before uh, we went on air that uh, you've been quite busy over there in your booth, so you haven't had a chance to see a lot of the show, but uh, tell us a little bit about what uh, the action you're seeing over your, uh, your booth today. Sure. Sure, we've, um, we've enjoyed a, a lot of people coming by, talking about a lot of different things, and one of the things that uh, we hear a lot about uh, with big data is how do you move it around, right? And that's what we help people with. Right. Um, and the interesting question now that, that comes up, you have so many different solutions out there. You've got these big in-memory databases. Mm -hmm. You've got other solutions out there from other vendors, and people are trying to figure out their best of breed solution. So people come to us for the how do we do that, how do we work with right. everybody, um, whether it's local, remote, and um, hearing all sorts of good conversations around that topic. Right, so let's set the table a little bit for our guests who may not be uh, familiar with Attunity. Tell yeah. us a little bit about the company. Uh, as you mentioned, it's about moving data around, it's about data integration, real-time right. data integration in this really big data world, uh, sure. if you will. So tell us a little bit about the approach that Attunity takes uh, to big data integration. Sure, so our, our uh, motto is we move any type of data, anytime, anywhere, and that's our real focus. Um, so a lot of customers you know, have built up databases over the years, whether it's uh, an Oracle database, and they need to move it to a SQL Server, or they need to move it to Exadata, or they need to move it to another data warehouse, Greenplum, Vertica, et cetera. So we help them with those types of solutions. Uh, that's often you know, what people want to do when they want to do reporting or near real-time reporting on a lot of different data stores, so we can help with that. And more recently, it's been the question of, well, my, my data is um, expanding not just in the data center to all these different uh, types of uses, but it's gone way out, and uh, you know, I'm pulling in data from all different sources, potentially all over the world, mm -hmm. and how do I do that effectively? So those are some of the conversations that, mm -hmm. that we deal with and what the company focuses on. Uh, we've been doing this for a while, and um, we just announced uh, our newest offering, which again focuses on going further and supporting more and more types of uh, data stores. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's talk about the kind of the, the global implications of big data. So we've covered uh, the industrial internet here uh, on the Cube. Uh, we were at the GE event back in uh, the spring, uh, you know, talking a lot about moving data between, you know, whether it's an industrial wind farm uh, and multiple wind farms all over the world. Right. Uh, between, you know, so you've got you've got devices on site. You've got you want to sure. also integrate that data in maybe a centralized cloud environment. Um, so is that something you help your clients do? Is that really where Attunity comes in to actually help make those connections possible? Because Really, yeah. the uh, you know the the Internet of Things or however you, whatever you want to call it is all about interconnections uh, of data sets. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, you know, I think you've you've hit a, a real important area. I know a lot of companies are focused on the industrial internet, um, and we see a lot of activity there. So I'll give you an example of one of our customers, a big customer um, out in Scandinavia called uh, Kongsberg, and they have this classical industrial internet problem, right? The question is, they've got a, they're a maritime company, they've, they've got to deal with data coming in from different ships all around the world, mm -hmm. um, different drilling platforms. It's a lot of data. If you look at platforms that do drilling, for example, across the world, you could be pulling up millions of bits of data you know, per minute. Uh, mm -hmm. They can carry as much as a couple of terabytes per day. Now you multiply that by mm -hmm. all the different rigs they have and it's spread out all over, right? So it's a wealth of information, um, but how do you collect it and gather it? And oftentimes that has to come over, it may be satellite links or indirect ways, um, so that could be a real, uh, a real problem. So that's one of the things that, uh, that we've been helping uh, them with. I think they're a classic uh, case with that. And if you think of, you know, even on a drill platform, if something goes wrong, right? Uh, if you're looking at one platform, you get on one piece of the data. If you have that global view of all your platforms and what's happening, something that might be a yellow light here, if it's a yellow light in several of them, now you know you have a major problem. So having that comprehensive dashboard becomes important. So it's another angle of how do you make big data go over big distances with a lot of different sources mm -hmm. and targets, and that's what we really help with. Lawrence, talk about the role of the cloud and Oracle, obviously a big database player, you have a lot yeah. of experience in that area. Sure. What has gone right with the cloud and yeah. what hasn't gone right with the cloud around the big data evolution? You yeah, talk, yeah. You've seen you know, some things work and not work. Obviously in memory's hot right now. Right, uh, right. But what, what's your take on the evolution? What's, what's gone right, what's gone wrong? Sure, sure. I think uh, a lot of things have, uh, you know, have gone right. Um, you, know, uh, you give a lot of credit to places like Amazon who have kind of built up trust in the cloud, built up a name for themselves, um, and built up credibility. So um, when we look at it from that angle, we've tried to you know, be a good partner to them and focus on, well, if you're going to use the cloud, you know, they focus on how do you make it a, a well-known and, and secure system, and we focus on how do we get in there faster. 
Um, when you look at what's gone wrong, I think you just have to look at the headlines from the past you know, week or so with Nirvonics, right? It's one example of a company that um, was doing well and you know, they've come across some hard times. And I think, you know, they, again, some people are trying to figure out the business model, how to compete with some of the bigger vendors, right? Um, so I think you know, places like Amazon have figured it out, you know, Oracle's you know, figuring it out as well. Um, but it's a challenge. You know, some of the more specialized ones, I think, are going to face the trouble as some of this becomes a bit well, more Oracle, uh, you know, Oracle more present tense, figuring it out. Right, I right, mean, yeah, what, sure. what are they doing right and wrong, in your opinion? Sure, um, I think that um, you know, they can do things that um, you know, other players can't. They've got the experience from working you know, on-premise um, you know, with large data stores and how that carries over to the cloud. We learned from that experience too. We were doing, you know, we've been doing this for over 10 years working on-premise, so a lot of the problems that come up over the, uh, over the cloud are similar to what we've seen there and we can lend that experience. So I think that's one advantage for a place like Oracle, right? You're not coming in from it with a clean sheet. You can actually think about that. So when you look at the cloud, a lot of the problems of how do I put a data warehouse in the cloud or how do I put Redshift in, you know, and to manage that, they already know how to do a lot of that. They speak all those different languages and so that helps some of the bigger players. It's not as easy as it looks. I mean, you've seen yeah. SAP stumble a little bit. We had success facts, did some on-prem stuff. Yeah. And they're obviously shifting. What's, what's, what's been the hardest thing that people don't realize about the cloud, moving the data in there? Sure, sure. I think the, one of the hard problems that at least we see people uh, struggling with and having an issue with is um, it's a great uh, concept, right? People want to try it. They do some tests and development. Uh, and then the scale up can become a real problem, right? So that's one big issue that, that people uh, need to focus on is how do you manage and deal with that. Um, the other issue is um, once you get it up and going, it might be great, but kind of getting all of your sources, getting all of that information set up to go in there. So we worked with um, you know, one of our customers, uh, Domain Holdings, and they manage all these different uh, properties online. Um, and they looked at the case of, um, you know, they wanted to go into the cloud. They looked at doing it all themselves from different, you know, traditional data stores. And they estimated it would take about three months of effort, you know, have to hire a full-time DBA, spend about, you know, 50 or 60,000 a year. Um, but, you know, they looked to us and what we help with and, and hopefully other, you know, other people are trying to do this too is simplifying that process, right? Make it more automated, make it, you know, much more easy to kind of click and go and, and get it moving. So the promise is there, but how do you deal with all this legacy and how do you make that transition much easier and, and lower that barrier, so. So, uh, you know, we, we, we've got to talk about Oracle and their kind of data integration play, of course. Sure. And uh, so, you know, obviously, data integration is a, it's a pretty competitive market. Uh, sure, you've yeah. got players like Oracle, you've got uh, Informatica, you've got IBM. Sure, yeah. Why, uh, help us understand a little bit where you differentiate from some of those players. So, Oracle, yeah, yeah. we know it's got uh, the Golden Gate acquisition back in 2009. Sure. Um, you know, all a uh, similar approach, I think, but maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, or tell us a little bit how you differentiate and, and kind of the benefit of a independent provider like yourselves versus yeah, yeah. Golden Gate, which is you know, part of the big red stack, if you will, and that yeah. comes with all the implications that uh, we've talked about today. Sure, well I think, um, you know, there's a couple of uh, key things there. One is, um, you know, again, how do you make it easy to, to move over? Because that becomes a, a, a big question of data integration, pulling in all these legacy sources and whatnot. Um, and one of the things that we've done is, um, that's tough for others to do, and for, uh, they haven't invested in, is how do you um, simplify that? So when a lot of the other players talk about, you know, I've got um, automation, that automation is often, well, what happens after they spend all this time scripting, right, to make mm. that happen? All that scripting work can take a lot of resources, it can take months of effort. Um, so what we really help differentiate on is, you know, we hide that under the covers, we do all that work, and then it's kind of a nice, easy to use GUI to, to kind of get going. And that's a big factor, right? If uh, they don't need a, a specialized DBA, they don't need a training, um, they don't have to invest as much, then that's mm -hmm. uh, a much lower barrier to kind of get started. That's one thing. Uh, the other aspect is just you know, pure performance, right? A lot of the uh, like CDC change data capture work that's been done over the years has been very, very focused on, a, um, on what you'd call a more moving from database to database, more of a transaction model, right? But when you're moving into data warehouses now and you're having all these different uh, targets in there, whether it's uh, you know, Exadata for Oracle or Greenplum or, or Teradata or, or, or Vertica, um, how do you um, deal with a CDC model that's much more built for a data warehouse? So you can combine a lot of the data, kind of package it up and put it together and streamline it before it moves over so you're making a much more efficient use of the bandwidth. So that's another unique aspect that, that we offer. Um, the other uh, aspect too is how do you optimize to really uh, get the best connection to each player, right? So you can imagine because we're an independent player, 
uh, we're kind of a, a Switzerland, if you will, in the whole <laughs> space. Um, it's very easy for us to come in and work very closely for this. Um, you know, I know we talked about Vertica, I think, last time we spoke, but you know, just the, the process of going into their lab, being invited into HP's lab, spending you know, a few weeks with them working on the interface, optimizing it for the SQL copy commands that they have, that type of you know, unfettered access that we get because of our position in the marketplace um, has also been really helpful to, to optimize performance. So it's that simplified uh, e you know, ease of use to get going and, and get started, it's the higher performance, it's that independence that we have, and then we do a bunch of other nice things too, like some of the other guys, you'll have to install software at the target mm -hmm. and, right. and, and source, and we keep that uh, uh, as lightweight as possible, so uh, most of the time you don't mm -hmm. have to do that. So it's very easy to get up and running right. as well. So. so it's about a smaller footprint, it's about yeah. better performance, yeah. just making it simpler with the GUI model, then of course the, the um, being independent, as you said, you, you get invited to HP's lab, which I don't think, I highly doubt Golden Gate uh, is going to get invited into HP's Vertica lab to do any of that kind of work anytime soon. Y you said that, not me, yeah, but well, I, I can yeah. see that. I'm yeah. going to go out on a limb <laughs> on that one. Right. But, uh, so, so tell us about, about how, is, how do you, as a, you know, as a marketer, uh, you're going up against some of these behemoths. Sure. How, are you, how are you getting this message out? And, and do you come up against, I, I imagine, if you go up into an Oracle environment, for instance, I'm sure uh, Oracle uh, brings their might uh, yes, yes. to the table, uh, sure. tries to get their install base to use Golden Gate, use some of their other integration capabilities. How are you, uh, what's your strategy against some of these giants in the industry? Sure, sure. Part of it is um, you know, getting the, the word out for the, the company. I mean, the nice thing is I've, I've been here a little under half a year now, so not that long, but the company has proved itself out technology-wise. So um, when we get in to actually do a trial and a proof of concept, we do quite well and that's where we show ourselves off. Um, so for us, it's getting that visibility, getting on the radar, and focusing you know, our messages in the right area. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm, I run marketing there, and a big focus of mine has been how do we get into you know, more events like this so people are more aware of us? Um, you know, how do we get you know, found online when people are looking for us? How do we make our, our messaging really focused around the data movement rather than doing you know, the jack of all trades, if you will? Um, and it's, it's tough, you are a small and nimble player, but you have to you know, keep the message targeting, get the word out here, and uh, you know, do things like the cube here. Oh, fantastic, so, yeah. well, you know, so we talked a little bit about the industrial internet. Let's go back to that if we could. Yeah. Um, so, so what are some of the other areas you're seeing as potential, uh, potential use cases, potential applications for Attunity? I mean, as, as we've documented, you know, there's certainly applications yeah. in healthcare. Sure. Um, you know, the electricity, the utilities uh, the industry. Um, yeah trucking, transportation, that kind of thing. So there are yeah. a lot of, a lot of uh, industries that you might not traditionally think of as big data industries that are you know, being, equipment's being, uh, out, out, uh, sensors are being added, added to that equipment. Um, yeah. you're, you're just seeing incredible amounts of data being created. Uh, David Foyer, our CTO, did a, did a study on this and uh, determined that the amount of data is growing twice as fast in that industrial internet world as the consumer big data world, if you will. Sure. Uh, so what are some of the other use cases you see as potential applications for your technology? Sure. Well, it's a, you know, one the classic one that um, you know is a typical example is uh, a company that we work with that deals in the manufacturing space, right? So um, you know they're manufacturing uh, memory and other kind of parts like that, and they have worldwide distribution. They're trying to pull data in from um, lots of different Oracle sources into like a SQL Server to monitor it. So how do you actually manage that, and how do you uh, to, to do that? And we can help them. And again, manufacturing is uh, maybe one of the less sexier ones, you know, <laughs> than, than what you might hear. But um, that's a typical, you know, big user that that uses the data. Um, for us, some new areas that we're excited uh, to get into as well that we've gotten more requests from, and we're actually announced at this show too, is you know, disaster recovery, right, and, and business continuity. So. We've made everything bi-directional now, so you have more fault tolerance and whatnot. So even though we've been used so far like in the financial industry for um, reporting, uh, like by companies like Equifax, mm -hmm. um, for pulling in a lot of information to like a green plum, um, now we have the door open uh, with some of our new solutions to really focus on, well, how do I help the bank or how do I help any of these other scenarios go with a two-way replication, which gives you that, that whole fault tolerance uh, capability. So I think the door will open more. We're, we're using a lot of the areas you mentioned, you know, if it, it spills out to manufacturing, finance, and others, um, and uh, in the web, and I think that's going to grow even more. So another, of course, important area that people are talking about a lot these days around big data, yeah. and the cloud in particular is security. So we've got, sure. you know, the NSA scandal, whatever you want to call it, is out there. Right. Uh, you know, it seems like there's more revelations every day, and yeah. the amount of data that was breached, I'm sure those those uh, uh, reports are going to keep leaking out. Yes. Um, 
I'm just curious, one of the bigger things we've been talking about is the potential of that scandal and, and just the concerns around security sure. uh, in the cloud to maybe dampen enthusiasm for cloud, uh, yeah. big, specifically around big data, moving your data into a cloud environment. Sure. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that that's gonna have a, this is going to have a long-term effect, or, or what do we, have to, we as an industry have to start thinking about uh, in terms of cloud security? Yeah, I think you have to uh, look at it from um, you know, the same uh, viewpoint that uh, companies who have dealt with this for a while have had to deal with. Uh, so we learned a lot about it through our acquisition. Um, we acquired a company about two years ago called RepliWeb that works on managed file transfer, moving over distances and whatnot, um, and keeping that secure with you know, high levels of encryption as well as with you know, key in the middle protection and whatnot. So we actually, uh, before we went into the cloud, and we said, how do we take our, our technology, which has been focused on on-premise databases, and how do we partner that with Redshift, for example, mm -hmm. we actually pulled in the technology from our managed file transfer company that we acquired to look at how do you do that security, and how do you actually you know, make sure that that link's up, up and running, and how do you make sure that you've got you know, the right key layers. So that work had already been done, so I think there's a lot to learn from companies outside the cloud moving files over distances and mm -hmm. taking that technology and bringing it to the cloud rather than trying to reinvent the wheel and saying, okay, I'm getting into the cloud, I've got a pipe, now what do I need to do, mm -hmm. right? So it's kind of that ground up approach. Lawrence, we're going to get you tight on time. You want a final couple of questions. One, what's yeah. going on in the booth? You said you, did, you didn't really have a chance to get the show because you're in the booth. Yeah, yeah. Talk about what's going on in the booth and talk about the post that you guys put out on your blog around the 31 flavors of support because <laughs> sure. it's complicated out there. I'll see. Yeah. And you guys have some news here. So talk about what's going on in the booth, the demos yeah. that you're doing, yeah. and then the support issue that you guys see and, and, and are taking advantage of. Absolutely. So yeah, we, uh, we put that blog out there a little bit, you know, tongue in cheek, but um, <laughs> it's, it's, a real, it's a real issue, right? When you look at all the targets and sources that have developed over the years for databases, going all the way back to mainframe and i-series and nonstop, which are still around, they're not going away anytime soon, to now you look at these proliferation of uh, data warehouses, everything from Greenplum to Vertica, to Exadata, um, and the list you know, keeps growing to Teradata's work. So when you, we started adding those up, and I'm like, boy, I bet you that's more than 30, right, that we can actually do. And sure enough, you know, it's, it gets into 30 to 40. And six um, new ones that you're announcing, right? So a lot of different versions. Yeah, exactly. So we've, uh, we've gone into Sybase, we've gone into um, you know, Vertica recently, we've gone into Microsoft PDW. So we're trying to cover all those because at the end of the day, customers are going to choose what, what they want, right? Especially the larger shops yeah. want the best of breed performance, the best of breed behavior. So uh, we're trying to make sure all those are covered. We'll keep introducing more and more, you know, by the end of the year, we keep covering that path. And we want to be the go-to solution, right, to handle all the different yeah. types that they have. Yeah, back in the old days, Dave and I always talk about the old days, being yeah. in the 80s and 90s. Multi-vendor is a big thing. Now that seems to move up the stack. You're seeing the yeah. lower parts of the stack hardening up. Right. The multi-vendor is moving up into the middleware and the app layer. Do you see sure. the same thing as well? Um, I think so. Um, you know, you've got uh, uh, people are trying to you know cover the whole you know base and the whole waterfront and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot more activity there. Um, you know, and we do well by being really focused on what we do best and just you know taking that technology. When you learn how to integrate with one data warehouse, you learn a lot of the kind of tips and trades to de to deal with others, right? A lot of the nuances. The nuances and all that. So you become better as a whole at doing that. And if you're just doing one or two, or that's kind of one piece of your multifaceted business, it's hard to do that. So. So talk about what you guys are announcing here with Oracle. Anything? Any? Um, you guys had some announcements with the uh, replication? Exactly. Yeah. So we've announced a couple of things. Uh, one is you know supporting these additional targets that I just mentioned. The other is this whole industrial uh, internet and supporting you know, much better, more resilient, higher performance, more secure, long distance links um, from site to site or site into the cloud. Um, and then the last piece is all about this disaster recovery and business mm -hmm. continuity. How do we uh, ensure that uh, there's two ways of communication so that when something goes down, we, we're the solution that people turn to as well. Lars Schwartz, VP of the Two Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate the time. This is live in San Francisco. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you.